Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. It doesn't matter how, you know, how great your content is if no one is seeing it. And so you have to be really consistent with A, how the content looks. So it can't be orange one day and blue the other day and purple the next day and different styles and things because they won't recognize that it's still you. It has to look consistent and you have to post consistently. You know, it used to be that we would see something seven times before we would want to buy it. And now, you know, last year it was, I think, 16 or 17 times. And, you know, it's probably more than 20 times getting up there before we see something. Many times we need to see something before we realize that or we make the connection that we should buy it or want to buy it. And so posting consistently really helps with that. Hi, this is Henneko. I'm so glad you took the time to stop by today. In Jamaican parlance, walk one. Be glad to say a dial. This episode is sponsored by HennekeWatkinsPorter.com as well as the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now on HennekeWatkinsPorter.com, you can visit us for blogs, resources, books, online podcast courses, podcasts, and more. If you are new to the Entrepreneurial New Podcast, be sure to check out past episodes with guests such as John Lee Dumas, Patrice Washington, Seth Godin, Richard Branson, Amy Porterfield, and a host of other game changers. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now, here's today's episode. Build something 100 people love, not something 1 million people kind of like. Brian Chesky. My peak performer, greetings to you. I really trust that you're doing safe and you're, you know, taking all the necessary precautions to stay that way. Of course, it is episode 192 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm your host, Henneka Watkins Porter. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today's episode is with Beck Power and Beck is a nomadic entrepreneur from New Zealand and now based in Toronto. Her agency, Power Creative Media, creates and posts thousands of pieces of micro content every month for clients. She also shows entrepreneurs how to be more strategic and effective using content to grow their influence, impact, and income online. I like those three I's, the alliteration mm-hmm. there. She's been featured in Forbes, Yahoo, Entrepreneur, and NY Mag. I'm so looking forward to what I presume is going to be an exciting conversation on amplifying your voice amidst the pandemic noise. Welcome back. Hi, Hanika. Thank you so much for having me. It's really great to be here. And it's great to have you. Now, before we start our conversation, if you visited Jamaica today, what would be the first thing you would do? Uh, Head to a supermarket. (laughs) (laughs) I always go straight to a supermarket. It's really weird. Why is that? Why is that? I always want to see what different foods there are um, available in supermarkets. It's kind of like a normal life type thing. I just like to check out the different flavors of things and different things that there are. <laughs> I don't know why I do it every time in a new country. Interesting, interesting. Sounds like you're a foodie, right? <laughs> like myself. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's start um, here as we talk about amplifying your voice amidst the pandemic. First of all, how is it for you? How is it going for you? I mean... 
not necessarily in terms of your business now, but, you know, this whole pandemic and stuff. How are you coping, Beck? It was interesting because when the borders closed, I actually was in Mexico. So I'm not Canadian, so I couldn't get back into Canada <laughs> because it was only Canadian citizens that were allowed back in. So I just stayed in Mexico for like five months and it has been really transformative time for me. You know, I had a lot of time on my own. I fostered some kittens. I built a whole business. I had to pivot my business from what I was doing before, which was based on speaking, uh, speaking gigs. Um, and so it's been really wonderful, actually. I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, I built a, you know, an amazing business really quickly uh, based around content. And I, I did a lot of personal I had a lot of personal growth in that time when I spent so much time by myself. It's been amazing. I want to segue into the fact that you describe yourself as a nomadic entrepreneur. You've perhaps mm -hmm. given us a little hint about that just a while ago, but <laughs> expound on that. Why do you consider yourself a nomadic entrepreneur? Yeah, so I left New Zealand in uh, 2013 or 14, yet. Uh, and I've been traveling around now for um, as many years, I guess six or seven years, pretty much full-time traveling. Uh, I spent probably two years on and off in Thailand, but other than that, I've been traveling around. I spent a lot of time in um, Europe and some in South America, a lot of, most of my time probably in Asia and Australia. Um, and I was building, you know, building businesses and figuring out the online world the whole time. Um, you don't need a lot of money to live in Asia. And so I was kind of experimenting and figuring out, you know, that the first few years of entrepreneurship are kind of a disaster for a lot of people, and they were for me. And um, as I was traveling, I was just figuring out how to run a business from a laptop. All right, so let's spend a little more time talking about the figuring out part of it. At what point throughout all of this, right? Because, uh, and perhaps I want to get a little of your entrepreneurship history um, mm -hmm. a little more so that we can probably put the pieces together to see, figure out at what point did it really become, this is it for me. Honestly, there wasn't really one time. There's been a few different times. I've owned, I mean, a few different businesses. Started my first one in New Zealand um, at importing furniture from uh, China when I was 26, so 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And, um, and then I had an SEO company, and I thought that was going to be the thing. Uh, but I learned how to make websites, and that's when I went traveling. And there's been every couple of years I've been like, this is great. This is it. And then I felt, and this is probably, there's a lot of mindset, mindset stuff in here, but a lot of times I would feel like this wasn't the thing. And I would just, you know, kind of shiny object syndrome um, would set in after a year or so. And I've had success with a lot of different things and many of them have been marketing related. So I've in the, in that way, I've learned a lot of different skills and I have a real good breadth or something of, con of um, marketing, understanding about marketing. But really, it's been in the last year, maybe the last 12 months that I really felt like, okay, I understand now that if I really push through the obstacles instead of giving up and trying something else, that's when um, success happens. That's really the last 12 months. I've really noticed my a change, a shift in my mindset where I know that the problems that come up in business are just part of the, you know, they're part of what needs to happen to be successful. And if you, it's like the obstacle is the way, right? You just push through those obstacles and that leads you on to the next level and the next level and the next level. And I would have never built, you know, a six figure business without having pushed through those obstacles. And um, so that's what that's taught me. Oh, interesting. And what I'm also gleaning from what you've just said, Beck, is the fact that it's okay to change your mind too, you know? Um, nothing mm -hmm. is cast in stone. And as entrepreneurs, um, sometimes to others, we, we come across as schizophrenic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for us to change our minds anytime we want to, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's permission to reinvent yourself at any time. And I think you, you can. You're not, we're not trees. You know, we can move. We can change our minds. We can decide we want something different. Our goals can change. We can, we can be fighting for something very different this year than we did last year. Yeah. We have that ability to reinvent ourselves yeah. all the time. And even trees are transplanted sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's true. <laughs> all right. So let's move into where you are now and where we're going to center the rest of our conversation creating mm -hmm. the content that will stand out because um, if ever there was a time when a lot of people were online 
it's now, you know, uh, before we, you know, many of us, we were online and, you know, we, we still thought that there was this big digital divide. And particularly if you're living, you know, uh, a developing country like I do, and then you recognize how much of a divide, um, you know, this technologically, uh, era is or, or spaces where we are. And so we are dependent on it. And now it, it kind of highlights all those issues. Suffice it to say though, persons are still looking for content, but in order to create the content that will uh, reach your target audience, you have to be different. You can't be, be more of the same, right? So talk to us about creating con- uh, content that will stand out. And particularly in this very noisy time where so much is on the internet, so much to see, so much scamming, so much scheming, so much everything. Yeah, exactly. I hear you. You're absolutely right. It's it's so important to create, first of all, content that is true to you. And second of all, content that is consistent. When I say true to you, uh, I really I really mean using your unique voice because there's very few, I mean, there are very few new things that you can say, right? A lot of people are already talking about, you know, most things on the internet. People are coming up with new ideas based on previous ideas, but most for most of us, we're not really coming up with anything new. Anything I'm going to say has been said before, and so what you have to do is say it in your own way, and 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 keep on saying it in your own way. And I call that type of content cornerstone content. It's the it's the things that you believe that make you different from other people. It's the way that you say things that make you different from other people. And so being really clear about your unique voice um, compared to the other voices in your industry or in your niche. Uh, that's one of the most important things because that's how people will either be magnetized to you or be repelled from you. And uh, really, it's important to divide people in that way so that you can get people who really love you, or uh, they're just not, or they're not interested. And there's never going, you're never going to be able to get everybody to love you. So you might as well get polarize your your message and get the people who love you to do to love you more. Mm-hmm. And you're absolutely right, Big. There is nothing new under the sun, right? Because as you talk about your own voice, um, you know, you're, you're pretty much just saying what has been said before, but in a different way mm-hmm. and your own mm-hmm. voice. And perhaps, for example, uh, if you're somebody who is deeply into your faith, right? Um, mm-hmm. there could be, uh, a stumbling block, as it were, stumbling block, as you know, you don't necessarily want to come across as too spiritual, but yet you mm-hmm. need to present that as your content. How do you craft content, therefore, in a way that it doesn't come across as, uh, quote unquote cheesy or, um, you know, too far left or too far right or whatever it is? Yeah, I guess, um, that's an interesting question because. Things appear cheesy when you're, in my in my experience, in my opinion, things appear cheesy when you're when you're trying too hard. That's when they're cheesy. I've seen people say all types of messages that, you know, I might find cheesy, but it doesn't sound cheesy coming from them because they're so it's from their heart. You know, they're so convicted about it, they're so into it, and they're excited. And one of the things that I find most Um, I'm going to use the word attractive about people, about humans is when they're talking about something that lights them up, right? It makes them, there's like, there's kind of like a light in their eyes when they're talking about this thing that is, they're so passionate about. And at that time, when someone's talking about that, it does not matter what it is, right, left, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. It's so endearing and attractive and it, it can't be cheesy when you, uh, and listen, it's, If it does look cheesy to people, those aren't your people. (laughs) Ah, exactly. I was about to ask in relation to the ideal, your ideal audience and customers Mm -hmm. and targets. Um, how would you look at that, um, from that standpoint? Yeah. For your, for your ideal people, they won't find it cheesy. If it's like, I'm not a religious person, I would say I'm more of a spiritual person, but it doesn't matter to me if I don't agree with someone talking about their, you know, their specific opinion based on their religion or something like that. Because I can, you know, I can tell that they are really passionate about it. And if it's not, you know, hurting anybody, then I I really respect it. I mean, I amplify messages, right? I help people to amplify their messages. So if someone has a message that's making the world better, that is, you know, they're really passionate about, I want to help them amplify it. And I'm excited about how passionate they are about that message. Mm -hmm. And so how does one position themselves as an authority? 
in a particular area so that because in order to create the content uh, and, and to, you know, have persons gravitating more towards you, then certainly you are to be seen as an authority. How does one do that? Yeah, definitely. So the types of content that um, that I help people to put out is I call it authority content. So what that means is that it makes there's a, I mean, there's a couple of different levels, um, but it makes people think of you in a different way. It takes them on a journey. So this journey will take someone from not knowing who you are at all and just seeing you as a random video on social media to, to buying something from you, to so becoming one of your clients, to being a raving fan. And there are a couple of um, different types of content that I've kind of coined. Um, there's, uh, you know, content showing pictures of your dog, showing pictures of um, what you're up to during the day. Um, there's framework, you know, and concept content, which is showing things like um, – you know, graphs or different, uh, you know, when you say like the three C's or the three I's that I used before, income, impact, and influence, um, you know, the three C's of content, the three whatevers of whatever it is that you do, having those tiny little frameworks really, really helps people to remember little tidbits about what you're teaching. Um, so the bridging, there's bridging content that helps them go, oh, okay, this is like, For example, if they watched one of your videos, this is really great, but I don't need it. Bridging content helps them to go, okay, this is actually what I need. That's things like um, testimonials, right? Putting out book reviews, putting out um, featured clients or case studies or things like that. So it's really in the types of content. And then the last thing I would say about it is really it doesn't matter how, you know, how great your content is if no one is seeing it. And so you have to be really consistent with a, how the content looks. So it can't be orange one day and blue the other day and purple the next day and different styles and things. Cause they won't recognize that it's still you it has to look consistent and you have to post consistently. You know, it used to be that we would see uh, something seven times before we would want to buy it. And now, you know, last year it was, I think, 16 or 17 times. And, you know, it's probably more than 20 times getting up there before we see something. Many times we need to see something before we realize that or we make the connection that we should buy it or want to buy it. And so posting consistently really helps with that. Right. So you talked about the journey um, that you've taken you've taken your clients on um, from perhaps unknown to, oh, let me take notice to perhaps very known. Um, what timeline can you say that you can do that in? And is it different, like for different uh, genres, different topics, different subject matter areas? Yeah, uh, that's a really great question. There's, I don't have an, a lot of data on that yet. Um, but what I've seen is a variety of different things. One interesting thing I found is that the people who, who engage a lot on your posts are not always the ones who buy. So sometimes you might think the people who, um, you know, are writing on the posts that you're putting out are the ones that buy. But a lot of times I've found the people, if I post a few times, if I'm continue, I post every day four or five times on multiple different platforms. We're very prolific with, our, with how often we post. And um, what I found is that after I've been posting on a certain topic, people who haven't posted on the, you know, who haven't commented on the post um, have been the ones to message me and ask me about my services. And when I ask them um, how, you know, when they started following me, they will say that they just um, saw a couple of posts and then they they wrote to me because of the like call to action post that I wrote. So I may have put like quote cards or different things. And I'm, this probably is in the span of, I don't know, I'd say two or three weeks with the people that I've talked to about it. But like I said, I don't have a huge amount of data on that right mm-hmm. now. And and two, I mean, you've hit a very important point because sometimes yeah, perhaps we're looking at the wrong metrics. So a lot of times we look at how many people like our post or mm-hmm. like the video and stuff and or comment. But perhaps even sometimes based on the nature of what it is that you do, a lot of people may not necessarily want to, um, it could be, I, I don't know, like, you know, generally it could be something that they don't want it, everybody to know that, you know, I'm interested in this or they're very private about it. And so they will um, come back to you privately. So it could be that, you know, we sometimes are looking at the wrong metrics. 
Mm, that's a really good point. Absolutely. I feel like the people who have bought from me, I would say about 60% of them at least haven't been people who have interacted with my stuff in the past. They've just messaged me out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, we want to talk a little about leveraging this pandemic right here. I mean, as bad as it is and seem and um, and, and all the, the various things that we're hearing, the negative things that we're hearing associated with this pandemic, certainly all isn't lost. Certainly there's a lot of benefits and good to come from it. Now, how does one leverage the pan, uh, this pandemic to win at content creation, to win uh, digitally? So I think that the best, I mean, I just said earlier that the, um, you know, someone's got to see something 15 or 20 times now before they will take action. Uh, that's, you know, the standard metric, but in order to win, I think you can, you can circumvent that a little bit because a lot of times people want to create new content, right? They create a podcast interviews, just like the one we're doing now. They create, um, video shows in their, in their Facebook group. They do lives, they're creating blog posts, all these things. And they feel like they, they're on a wheel of content. They need to keep producing, keep producing, keep producing. And it's exhausting, right? It can be really exhausting. And if you're, if you're talking about someone seeing something 20 times before they want to buy it or see it even five, 10 times before they are interested in working with you, that's exhausting. You're constantly on that wheel. And so what I've um, decided and, and uh, what's really worked, been working for me and my clients is to actually take the content that you've got that exists now and repurpose it. So we can take one podcast episode and turn that into 30 pieces of content. That's enough for once a day for an entire month from one podcast episode. Uh, that includes, you know, you can pull all types of stuff out of um, podcast episodes and or any episodes, videos even better because you've got now got video and audio to work with. But you can make, um, you know, audiograms. You can create quote cards. You can create um, a micro or you could create micro videos from different things. You can create um, GIFs and memes and blog posts. You can create a bunch of different blog posts or social media questions or engagement clips or things like that just from one, uh, one episode. And so um, I've found that that's the best way to circumvent, you know, creating more and more and more content all the time that's exhausting. You just take one thing that you've already done. Because honestly, the messages that we say, I mean, you – and I probably talk about the same 15 things, generally speaking. You know, our, our messages that we keep pumping, I mean, we talk about the different things to different people, but in terms of our messaging that's going out and out and out and out, we're selling specific things. So the, the messages are really similar. So we don't need to um, recreate the wheel every week or every month. We just need to, or every day, we just need to figure out what our main points are, 15 or 20 different things that we always talk about, and then say them in, in different ways and produce more content on those in different ways using the major pillar content, which is the videos and audios and things like that, that we've already got. We are pretty much towards the tail end of our conversation, and it has been quite insightful thus far. Now, as we, cont well, as we wrap up, the theme that we've been exploring, amplifying your voice amidst the pandemic noise. What I'm going to ask you to do is to just give us your final thoughts on the topic, as well as um, at the end, you may share your contact information, how might I come in to get in touch with you. And you did say um, previously that a content toolkit you may have um, for our audience. So you can share all that information as you as you wrap. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I guess my final thoughts on this are um, that e even in a pandemic, you know, people are a captive audience and we have to produce content for them. And there isn't, you know, even though we can produce a whole bunch of content and if you're feeling overwhelmed by that, you don't need to because you can just reuse the content that you've already got. And you can find out more about that by um, grabbing the content toolkit and joining our academy at powercreativemedia.com. That's where you'll find more about me, more about the Academy, more about all the stuff that I've been talking about, powercreativemedia.com, just kind of how those words sound. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beck Power. It has been my absolute pleasure having this conversation with you, uh, you know, my nomadic entrepreneur. <laughs> Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you, my peak performer, for tuning in to this episode with Beck Power. 
I absolutely look forward to connecting with you next week. In the meantime, though, remember, you can go to hennikawatkisporter.com and send me a WhatsApp message right from the homepage, which will come directly to my phone. Contact me for all things podcasting, books, coaching, online courses, blogs, just things that will help you level up your game. If it's your first time hearing this podcast, first of all, thank you for tuning in. But I also ask you that you will share it with a friend, share it with somebody who may, you know, may find this very useful topic insightful and want to learn something from it let me leave my point of hope with you for this week and here goes so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of christ romans 10 verse 17 what good 